Hey there everybody, it's Kathy Champion and you're back with me here at Random Acts of Crafting and I know I've been missing in action and I do apologize for that. Uh, I had, as some, many of you already know this, but I had um, dental surgery about three weeks ago and it was pretty uh, intense and for whatever reason I have had a hard time getting back into my craft room and getting creative again. I don't know if it was because of the break. Uh, I did come in and do some crafting. I did put a, a couple videos up on my other channel which I'll link I'll link into the uh, description of this one. So if you want to go over and check out my stamping up um, uh, channel and website please do so. But anyway I wanted to do um, a really um, unusual and this is kind of something new on the scene um, fun fold card but I wanted to use Edith's um, club kit so what I've done is I have um, I've got her kit here I wiped this off while ago and it's still a little bit damp so let me let me grab a paper towel And just wipe this down a little bit. Last thing you want to do is put your um, your pretties in something wet and then have them warp. But this is the club kit for this month, and I'm sure many of you have already gotten it. I'm not going to review it because uh, I am late getting this up. But what I want to do is choose my paper that I want to use. I know that I want to grab a 12 by 12 out of my stash because it, having a 12 by 12 makes it a little easier to do your um, your card out of. So uh, I'm going to grab, um, what I wanted to do is look at the colors in the paper. And I think I'm going to go with something with this, this color right here. So let me grab a piece, and I believe I've got a piece right here. Those are in the same color family. It's like a, a deep um, sort of copper color. Very pretty for fall. This one is a shimmer. You can see it's got a shimmer on it. So we are going to use this. And I'm going to decide whether I'm going to want to fussy cut any of these. And if I do, I'm definitely going to glue this down onto a piece of cardstock. But we'll, we'll come back to that. Um, I am going to lay everything right here. But before we get started, I want to show you the mechanism that we're going to be using. This is my prototype, and this is called a stage. Let me zoom you in just a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. This is called a stage um, or theater card because when you open it up you have almost like a little stage with the curtains and it's very dimensional but yet it lays flat. It's like a four by six. Uh, when everything's said and done it's a little bit over four but this one right here I when this one's one that I did by instructions and I did kind of revamp it and here's one that I worked on that actually has some paper on it um, and if you notice when you pull this open See how beautiful that looks? And I've got a little brace in here. I actually put two on this one, but I don't think um, I don't think we're going to need the second one. Uh, what did I do with it? Here it is. But that little piece is nothing but just a little mechanism like that. But everything just slides very good, very perfectly. I love this card. When I saw it, I knew that this was something I, I wanted to make. So, I got busy and I got to working on it, and that's what I came up with. So, we're going to use the um, Edith Club Kit for October. And the first thing you're going to want to do is cut your pieces. And it does take four four by six pieces. So you have to have one piece for the back, one for the front, and two for the sides that go in and out. And this will all make much more sense as we go. This is definitely a card that I would I would strongly recommend watching the video. And then I would make out of some cardstock that you really don't care about, like I did this, do a trial run. 
uh, if you do a trial run, you won't be wasting your pretty paper and become very frustrated. I know I get frustrated when I use my pretty paper and mess it up, and I'm sure you're no different than I am. Okay, so I'm going to bring this over, and I'm going to cut this into uh, six. So now we know that we have six and six because this was a 12 by 12. And I'm going to turn one piece and I'm going to cut it down at four. And I'm going to get another one at four. And you should be able to get three pieces out of one side. So there's three. So now that we've got three pieces cut from that one half, um, we need one more. So I'm going to turn this piece and I'm going to trim it at four also. So just to give me those four pieces. Now I have this piece left over that we can use for trim and for some of the mechanisms that's going to work in this card. And I'll show you how that works as we go. Alright, the next thing I want to do is decide... Well, let me explain these panels. This one's going to be your front. That's going to be your back. And these two pieces are going to be your mechanisms that's like your curtain that's going to slide back and forth. So I'm going to lay the front and the back to the side because we're going to need to do some scoring on these two pieces. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to put this into your scoreboard. Now if you have a regular scoreboard and not the trimmer that has the scoring tool on it, it's the same thing. You're going to score at three. So I'm going to close that down and score at three. And then I'm going to move it over and I'm going to score at one and a half. And I'll tell you how, how you get that measurement. Um, this is six inches, half of it is three, and half of three is one and a half. So that's, that's what you do. And all you're going to do is just fold it like that and then fold it again like this. And what you're going to have is what looks like an L. So, and that's the way you want to fold it. But remember, when you're putting this on the card, don't make the mistake of putting it like this. These pieces, the raw edge from this needs to be facing to the right and the left of the card. And, I, and I'll explain that a little bit further as we go. We have one more piece that we need to score. So I'm going to score it at three and then at one and a half. And then we're going to fold and fold. Now just as a little plug, if y'all are wondering what kind of trimmer this is, I'm going to zoom out. Oops, wrong way. I'm going to zoom out a little bit and I'm going to show you. This is the Stamping Up Trimmer. And if you're interested in this, you can go over to my website on my other channel. And like I said, I will link that channel below this one. And uh, you can actually visit my website and you can pick up one of these. These are $25 and well worth it because you have an arm that goes out to 17 inches. Um, you have this beautiful grid on here that will not come off. This will not wear off. And it's and you can wipe it down. If you get ink or anything on it, you can wipe it off. It's, it's very nice. You have this clear track. You get both of your blades. Your scoring blade is the lighter colored one and your cutting blade is the darker one. And they both go down out of your way so you can work. So you can push one up and one down. And uh, you got this wonderful tray and I this is the one of the best trimmers that I ever use. And you, they also sell replacement blades. And you want to see how easy it is to, re to replace a blade. You bring it up. There's a little, gr a little groove right here. You press, you press up on one side and down on the other. And you lift that out. Now how simple is that? And to put it back in, you just do the same thing. And it pops right back in and ready to go. So... Again, I know that sometimes when you see me use some tools and you might wonder, where, what is that? Where did you get it? So that's the story on that. Now, what you want to do with these, you know that they need to go like this on the back of your card. But the first thing you want to do, let's, let's put that aside for a second and let's work on our front. Because I want to put something very pretty on my front. 
And I think what I'm going to do, I'm really kind of in between these leaves, which will be beautiful on here. Or these flowers, which are also beautiful. And there's also a, a really pretty plaid. I love that plaid. Hmm, I think I'm going to go with the plaid. I don't know. I'm so indecisive. Let's go with this one. Okay, we're, we're going to go with this for our front. So I'm going to take this one out, and we know that we need to cut this down to the 4 by 6 We already have the 6, so we just need to get 4. So I'm going to bring this to 4. Actually, I'm going to bring it to about 3 and 7 eighths. I want just a tiny bit of a border around around it, so I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to do it the same way, three and seven eighths. That was four, and now this one we need to cut at five and seven eighths. And if you notice, that's going to be just an eighth of an inch off of that piece, just a little sliver. Now, this is going to go down on this piece. And I'm trying to decide if I want to do um, I think I'm going to use liquid glue on here. And we are going to just swirl a little glue. Just like so, and then we are going to lay this down. Like that. And press it. Now y'all know that I am a stickler for really pushing that glue out. So I'm just going to use my bone folder and go across this. Just to make sure that I got that completely adhered down. And I am going to use, again, because I do sell Stamping Up, I have a lot of Stamping Up products, and these are the um, Rectangle Stitch dies, and I'm going to use this one to cut my window out of, out of here. Uh, let's make sure. Yeah, this is the one I want to use. And this, if you don't have these and you just have some other um, dies, this one is about 4 and an 8 by... Uh, two and three fourths. So I am going to put this down and I want to measure because I want to make sure I'm getting the same amount of space all the way around. So that is seven eighths. Let's see if I got, oops, let's see if I got seven eighths on this side. Yep, so that looks good right there. Please excuse my puppy. That is actually Bella, and she is in her little whiny mood this morning. Bless her heart. And she, I always call her my whiner because she can whine. The cutest little sad whine you ever wanted to hear. Alright, this is going to be about 5 eighths. And five eight. So that looks really good. That looks like I've got it evened up all the way around. So I'm going to use these little post-it note flags. They work really good on your dies for holding them in place without tearing your paper. And I'm going to run this through my die cut machine. And we are cutting through two layers, but this particular machine that I'm using is um, wonderful, and you can usually 
get this to cut with just running it through and back. So let's see. Um, maybe. We got that cut and now that's perfect. We're going to save this piece because I have plans for it. We are actually going to put this back in like here, but we're going to go to the back and we're going to lay this all down and get it nice and even, just like this. I might even use my post-it notes again, just like this, just to hold that in place. Oops. And y'all give me just a second, and I'll be right back. I'm going to go and give her a treat and see if I can stop her from whining. I'll be right back. <laughs> okay, I am back, and hopefully I got my puppy settled down. Now, what I'm going to do is put some glue on the back of this. But if you notice, that right there has a, needs a little bit of a haircut. So I'm just going to take a pair of paper snips or little scissors, and I'm going to trim that off just like that, just so I can clean it up. Now, I want it to go in exactly the way it was cut out so everything matches up. So I'm going to put it down with just some glue. And the reason I wanted to make sure that I put it in the same spot, because I want it to be in the background of this card when, when it's open. And you'll see all of that come to life as we move along. So I'm just going to sit that down in there, just like that. And then I want to pull this up because I don't want that, I don't want anything to glue to that. I just want to glue to this piece here. Again, my trusty bone folder. Making sure that I push that glue out to the edges. Oh, not under it. <laughs> that didn't work out too good, did it? There we go. A little bit of glue right there and smush it, smush it, smush it. All right, so now that we have that down and we have this piece done, let me take my little note flags off of there. We are ready to start working on these pieces. Now, this piece right here, this part of your L, so it's going to be that inside piece. We're going to do a little slit in here that we're going to actually feed through a piece like this that's going to act as a mechanism and I want it to be about halfway so I'm going to do I'm going to actually lay this down and I'm going to show you how to cut one of these and I use the uh, not your mama's cardstock because I needed something that was heavy so you can use uh, anything you can use the cardstock that you're making the card out of if you like um, or you can take a piece of white and then cover it with the, uh, something that you're doing with the cardstock. However it works for you, I might even cover it with this. Let's see. But the first thing I want to do is I want to measure up um, about an inch, maybe three quarters. Let's go three quarters of an inch. And I am going to put just a little dot there and then I want this mechanism to go right about here so I'm going to hold that mechanism and from that line that I made I'm going to draw up like that now we're not going to need to go up quite that far I don't need an inch I only need an, about a half an inch so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a craft knife and be careful with your craft knife and I'm going to take my ruler and I am going to go about three quarters of an inch and that's about what I've got there and I am going to cut And just 
be mindful that you are dealing with a sharp object and let's test it let's make sure we can feed this through there it's going to be going from this side very good and make sure that it will move back and forth okay that looks good now we're going to do the same thing with this one. We're going to measure up that same amount, which was three quarters. And we've got to make sure that we're doing this in the right orientation. So get your pieces like this. Yep. And then make sure you lay it down. Measure up that three quarters of an inch to the center and make a little line. And we're going to take this piece back out. And you can actually put more than one of these in if you like. You could, um, I think one's going to be enough where I'm, where I'm placing this. So we're going to use this as our guide. And we are going to make our line right there. three quarters of an inch. Now I'm going to take my ruler and my knife the piece will go through on this side as well. I always like to do a test run because you don't want to get the card together and then find out that this isn't working. It's better to test it before you put it together. And that looks really good. That, that's moving and that's exactly what we need. So if you do get where you don't feel like your piece is moving like it should, you can cut the slit a little bit bigger. Um, just take your paper snips and go in and cut it, you know, cut it out a little bit more like this. And I mean, that's going to be hidden, so no one's going to see it. It's going to be like that, so it doesn't matter how you do that. So I think what I want to do now is I'm going to go ahead and make a I'm going to show you all how to do this um, before we go any further. And then we'll cover the, our side pieces with another pattern paper. And we'll be almost ready to roll with this. Uh, I use, like I said, a piece of the Not Your Mama's cardstock. And the stuff is super, super thick. Um, what you want to do is cut a one inch strip off of a piece. And you're going to cut one inch uh, by four and a half, I believe. Let me make sure. Yeah, one by four and a half. So let's take off a, a one inch. Let's cut just cut a one inch piece off of here. And then we're going to cut that down to four and a half. And now we're going to do some scoring. We're going to score on each long side at a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to turn it over and score again at a quarter of an inch. And then we're going to turn it to this long side here and score at a half an inch. And then turn it and do another half an inch on that side. So now you're going to take your paper snips 
and on these little tabs right here, on it, you're going to hold it like this. Let me zoom you in a little bit. So what you're going to do is you're just going to cut up on each one of these tabs, just up to the score line on both sides. Turn it and just snip and snip. And now what you're going to do is, if you want to use a longer pair of scissors, by all means, get them in there. But I find that my snips work really good, or a little pair of uh, cutter bees, whatever kind of little scissors you have. And just go up and cut that piece completely away. And then turn it over. And let's do the same thing here. And there you go. Now there's your, your mechanism. Just like this one. So we're going to fold those pieces back. But we're not going to worry about that yet because we're not putting that in just quite yet. What we want to do now is adhere our side pieces. And like I said, you want to make sure that these flaps are going out and making sure that your cut pieces are in place like that, your little slits that you made. So I'm going to actually use some um, adhesive because this is, uh, this is some really strong stuff. This is the uh, Stampin' Seal Plus and I have just fallen in love with this stuff. So what you're going to do is just um, get it started. I'm going to run a piece all the way down and over and then up. Just like that. And then what you want to do is match up your edges. So I'm going to be very careful to get that perfectly on there just like that. And once you have that down, take your bone folder and just give it a really good crease just like that. And if you have any, any of the glue that's hanging over, if you have one of these little gum um, adhesive erasers, this is wonderful for pulling that extra glue off right there. So just roll it off. And now that part of the, of the mechanism is on and good to go. So now we need to do the same thing on this piece. So I'm going to use some stamp and seal again. Just like that, and we are going to put this one down the same way, matching up our edges perfectly, and just press it into place. And when you match these together, it should come together just like that. How, how cool is that? Now we need to make a, a sliding mechanism that will go on the back of this. And to do that, I'm going to use another piece of this. And we are going to cut this at one inch. By... Five and a quarter. I'm giving myself a little extra room there, and I'll tell you why. So one inch by five and a quarter. I'm just going to cut a one inch strip off here. And 
Then one more. You're going to need two of them. And then we're going to cut them down to five and a quarter. back over and what we're going to do is we want to put this on here like so just hold it and look at it from the back and you want to even it up so you have about the same amount on each side and you just want to wrap this but not bend it tight just wrap it a little bit and then you're going to do the same thing for the other side. You're just going to wrap it because you the, you want this piece to be loose. So you don't want to glue this down tight. You want it to be able to bow. And you're going to do the same thing for the other side. You're going to line it up. Let's see if we can do it on this side. I think we can see it a little bit better. Once you get it on there about like that, then just roll it and then roll it and take it off. And you can adhere this in one of two ways. You can glue it or you can use some sticky tape. And let me show you what you're going to do. You're going to turn this over and this piece is going to go down like this and this. And you see what that's going to create? It's an arch. And that's going to be perfect. I am going to use our glitter glue. Um, you could use your um, stamp and seal, or you could use a tape runner, but or you could use two-sided tape. But I'm going to go with my glue. And you want to bring this all the way to the edge. Go ahead and let that adhere before you decide to um, want to lift that off. I'm just going to wipe up a little bit of that excess glue. And I want to make sure that that is on there really well. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Glue. And when I press it down, I want to make sure that I'm keeping that arch. But I also want it to make sure it goes to the edge because this is crucial for the piece to slide in and out. And once you get it on there, you can come in with your bone folder and really give it a good smooshing. Is that a technical term in card making? I'm not sure. I don't think so, but hey. <laughs> Alright, we're going to do the same thing over here. Let me wipe the glue off of my fingers because I am getting gluey. I'm pretty sure that is a word in crafting. I think we've all gotten gluey. That's when you get glue everywhere except where it should be. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to put this one right here. Hold it. Make sure it's all the way up to the top. Let it adhere. I'm going to wipe a little bit of that excess glue. The good thing about the liquid glue, it does give you some wiggle room. And that's another reason why I think I would use the liquid glue here. Alrighty. So now, we're going to do this side the same way. And let's push this down. Just 
just like that. And you want to just kind of do this to your to your card. See how it's making that little bow, and that's because this is what everything's going to slide into. So what you're going to do at this point is you're going to turn this over and you're going to slide one side in. That's why you want to make sure that you get these pieces to fit. Mm, it's going to be tight. It's okay. Let's see if we can get it to slide. And if we can't, I'll tell you a little trick. Take your scissors and just trim the tiniest little bit off of this at an angle you know how you do in your boxes when you take the little pie shape out this is the same principle just on a longer piece just like that and those two little slivers will make all the difference of you being able to um, feed this in let me pull it back around and let's see if that's going to fit now. Oh yeah. Look, see the difference that that made? So we're probably going to do the same thing on that side. Beautiful. But before we go any further, let's pull this back off. We're going to trim this side like we did that side and we also got to decorate these sides and then we're gonna do it like this get this out of our way little slivers we need to put this piece in and we need to do these front panels. So I'm going to do the front panels first. So I use that floral for the card itself. So you know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking that plaid would be stinking cute with the flowers. What do y'all think? Let's see if we have a, a different one that I would like better. Nope. I think I'm going to go, hmm, this one's pretty too. Oh, that would be so pretty. Okay, I changed my mind. Remember, that's a woman's prerogative, and we are very apt to do just that. <laughs> Change our mind over and over. I also was looking at these little polka dot ones, because this is very similar, um, to see if I found one in here that I liked. Hmm, I think I'm going with this teal. I love it that it picks up the teal in here of the leaves. So we're going to go with this and we need to measure. And since we did cut these off a little bit, it's, it is going to be off, but that's okay. So it needs to be three by three and seven eighths. Um, so we're going to do two and three fourths by three and three fourths. And we'll we'll trim this up to match. Um, okay, so two and three fourths. And so 
So now we can bring this back over. And we have our, oops, might need this one. We have these pieces that are going to go on here. going to square this up a little bit more so that it will fit a little bit better than what it did. So I'm just going to cut that out like that. And I'll do the same thing over here. We cut off the top of that one. We're going to cut off the top here. The bottom looks fairly straight. Yeah. The top is where we cut. So we're going to do straight across and up. And all we're doing is squaring it up. No big deal. It's just squaring everything up so that it will fit better. So now we're going to lay this on here. glue down. And just mat that on there just like that. Of course I've gotten glue everywhere. So, and we're going to lay this on here. And even though I did cut this on the top and this on the bottom, and it does give you a little bit of unevenness, it's okay. We're going to decorate this and nobody will know the difference. Nobody but us. Because we all know we don't do perfect, right? A homemade card is just that. It's a homemade card. And it's going to have some character flaws, just like we do. We all have character flaws. Uh, I'm sure if you could sit and think of things you don't like about yourself, you could probably make a list. I know I could. Um, we all seem to have those tendencies, so... Alright, so I want to decide what I want to do to decorate this. So let me um, let's slide this in and make sure everything's fitting. And then I'm going to go off camera and find some embellishments and maybe some uh, stamps and what have you. And when I come back, we are, oh yeah. See, nobody's going to see that, part, that flaw up there now because this is hid up underneath here. We still need to cut out our little notches here. And let me show you how to do that real quick before we um, before we go. And we got to put our little piece in here. So let's go ahead and put our mechanism in first. And that is so simple to do. Just fold your little tabs under and slide that in. And once you get it slid in, open up your tabs like that so that that will not come back out. You don't want to glue this because it will move. But you do need to uh, open it up so it doesn't pull back through. And the same thing on this side. Open that up and then just open it like that. And now you've got a little place in there to glue some little dimensionals. And I'll show you how cute that's going to be when we get back. Alright, let's slide this back on. Oops, wrong one. Let's see. This one goes on under here. You have to kind of think this through to figure out what goes where, but it, you'll see it as you make it, how easy that this card is. It's really not as hard as it looks. 
Now I took that out because I was going to show you where to do your, punch, your little thumb punches. I've got a one inch uh, circle punch and what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold these two pieces together and I'm going to come in about halfway looking from this side to this side. You want to get it as even as you can and I'm going to come out just a hair and all I want to do is cut what they call like a little thumbprint. And that flew across the room. <laughs> that was a hard punch because you know what? We're, we got some heavy cardstock here. Again, I'm looking at this side to that side and that little half moon right there. And that went across the room too. All right. So now we are definitely ready to slide this back on. And back on here. And now we are ready to decorate our little stage fold card. Is that not the cutest thing you've ever seen? And when we get this decorated back here and all of our little goodies in there, it's going to be gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. So I'm going to probably look through here and find one of these little uh, cut aparts um, to put in the very back. And then we're going to use some pumpkins and something right here that make it look very much like fall. And we might even put something here around the edge. So let me go and do that and I will be right back. Okay, I am back and I pulled this stamp set. This is um, one of the newer stamp sets for May May. This was the one for this month, October. And it's called Howdy Pumpkin. And I pulled off all of these little pumpkins. And I am going to stamp all these different little pumpkins. And I love this little leaf. So I'm going to stamp it as well. And we are going to do some fussy cutting. Um, some people don't like to fussy cut. I used to didn't like to fussy cut, but I have become a little better at it. And it's like anything else, the more you practice, the better you get. So I'm going to get these on here as straight as I can. Not, as, not that it's going to matter, but um, I just like to get be as straight as I can be to start off with. And I am going to put that on there. Pulling out all of my stamp blocks. And we got one more. I don't think he's going to fit on that one. Nope. And I need one more small stamp block. Tell you what, we'll hold him over here. Or we can switch off. Put this one on here. And this one on here. Usually I have enough stamp blocks to usually get as much as I need. So, <laughs> all right, I'm going to move my card and some of my stuff out of my way so that I can have room here to stamp. Makes sense, right? All right, let's go in. I am using this um, mat. This is a stamp and pierce mat. And anytime you're using photopolymer stamps, it is a good idea to use some type of surface under it. And also, it's a good idea to condition your stamps. I usually like to just rub them over my skin, so I've got that one pretty much um, seasoned. And I'm going to do this one. And some people like to put them in their Versamark ink to season them because it is a clear ink uh, and it's sticky and these are poor stamps so they need a little bit of help when you first use them and they just get better and better as time goes by. Alright, let's see if we got those done enough that we can get a good stamp. So I'm going to ink this up and I'm using Memento ink because I'm going to use alcohol markers to color these. So I'm going to come up here and stamp this one right here. Ah, beautiful. I'm going to do about three of each. I'm 
So pretty. Now I'm not going to do a thorough clean on my stamps, but I am going to uh, mist my little chamois and just rub them off over here on the side after I use them. Oops, wrong one. It was this one. I don't like dirty stamps, so I'm such a, a stickler for making sure that I get them cleaned after I use them. These are stamping really pretty. And I'm going to do about three of each of these. I think that would be plenty. going to do the little leaves. I'm going to do several of these little leaves because they are just too cute. Let's see if we can stamp one right about I'm going to get it off of that little curve of the of the oops, I messed up. Oh, that's perfect. Yep, maybe I don't want to do these. I love it. Let's see if we can do one off of this one. And then I'm just going to do a couple over here. Kind of by themselves. How cute. So... Now let's cover my ink up. And I'm going to let these dry just for a moment. And then we are going to pull out some different colors of ink. So I've got these little pieces here that I think I want to use and maybe even form fresh pumpkins because we're going to put a little um, a little piece there. So I'm going to pull out some fall colors which are I don't want the coral calypso, I want the pumpkin pie and I think the Cajun craze. I'm going to start off with these two colors and then we will kind of move from there. We might even go into a teal. The mint macaron is kind of a tealy color. So let's start off with this. And I am going to start off using the uh, light pumpkin pie. And I'm actually going to start right here. And all I'm doing is just coloring in this pumpkin. Just want to put down some color and make sure that he's all pretty and orangey. And you're probably thinking, well, this is way too light to be a pumpkin. Let me zoom you all in just a little bit so you can see. And it probably is a little light for a pumpkin, but remember, we're going to go back over it with a darker color. We're going to blend. And if you're wondering, I'm using the uh, Stamping Up Stampin' Blends. And I'm going to go back in, and I'm just going to go along these lines. I'm going to swoop up here at the bottom and put a little shadow. Just like that. You know it's going to be a little darker at the bottom. So 
and I'm going to let that dry. And while it's drying, I'm going to go back over with the same color. And we're going to color one of these bigger pumpkins. And now that this one has dried enough, I'm going to go back and I'm just going to pull some of that color up. And look how beautiful that pumpkin turned out. Yeah, I did go out the line a little bit, but that's okay because we're going to fussy cut these. So I'm going to try another one using the Cajun Craze and I'm going to go in with the lighter color. This is going to be a deeper color. We picked up a beautiful pumpkin this past week, um, and it was so cheap. I think it was like $3 and something, and it's huge, 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 huge pumpkin. Now, I'm going to go back and put a little stem on some of these, um, the ones that I've already done, and color the leaves. So I'm trying to decide. I think I want to do the mossy green. So, um... I'm going to use the bullet tip for this. And I'm just going to do that stem and a little bit of the leaf. Not totally doing that leaf because I think I'm going to go back in with some white olive. pretty very very pretty but you do know that our leaves are not always brown I mean green especially in the fall we've got brown so I'm going to pull out the light uh, soft suede and we're going to do this leaf in a brown leaving a little bit for some orange All leaves are never the same color. Y'all know that. We always get different uh, shades of coloring. So I'm going to use the dark soft suede. We're going to give this pumpkin a little bit darker stem. I'm going to come back up to this one and I'm just going to use the dark I'm going to let that dry before I go back in and now the Cajun Craze I'm going to go back in with this one with the dark and all I want to do is just line it. And see how much fun it is to color these little pumpkins? So much fun. Now I do want to do a teal. And I think for the teal I'm going to grab this light Bermuda Bay. I love a teal pumpkin. Of course, I've never seen a teal pumpkin growing in a pumpkin patch, but, um, you know, 
Today they can alter things so much. So it would not be impossible. And finish coloring these pumpkins and get them uh, punched out and then we will be right back not punched I'm sorry I don't have punches for these <laughs> or dies I'm gonna fussy cut them and then we will be right back all right we are back and as you can see I went ahead and took that sign farm fresh pumpkins and I wasn't even thinking that I wasn't recording because I got so excited and carried away with wanting to decorate this card but I did stop myself at that point I stopped and I did all I done was put this down on dimensionals and um, or a piece of foam tape and uh, and I did the same thing with my little pumpkins I just popped them up on some uh, foam tape and I've got these other pumpkins that I've um, stamped and colored and fussy cut and then I had this little sign right here that was um, thankful and blessed and I'm really just thinking I want to put this somewhere on my card just not sure exactly where yet um, the other thing I thought about was maybe putting this across here um, that would be really cute and it would live just whatever it takes to help um, decorate the front of your card because it can look a little plain um, so any little thing that you can you know pop up like this uh, will will help to decorate the the edges of that I'm looking back through some of my other ephemera and seeing if I have something else that I would like to use but I really don't Let's look in the little cut aparts again. And um, this is cute. Never pet, met a pumpkin I didn't like. Um, let's see. Here's some more. Hello, Fall. This is this is such a cute pack of paper. Um, Let's go ahead and work with what we got, and then we then we can go from there. But what I want to do is, I'm trying to decide if I wanted to put pumpkins here. Maybe, maybe the this nice teal one in the middle, and then a couple of short ones on each side of it. Okay, I think that's what I'm going to do, and I'm just going to use glue and glue these straight down. We don't need any more bulk in there. And I don't want too much because I want this to be able to close. So I'm going to put this one right in the middle, like so. And then I think I'm going to take one of these and we're going to just put some right across that bottom edge because that's all that you are um, gluing down. And then we'll do this one. maybe right there and let's see if that's gonna allow that to come together it kind of pushes them together let's keep sliding off of the truck for some reason I need to figure out why that's slipping there we go oh that's cute and that will work with them bunched like that so I'm going to close that down and just press it so that they adhere. Now we know that those pumpkins are going to be fine living right there. The other thing that I, <clears throat> that I wanted to do was I want to put this frame right here. And or do I want to do this? There's always something to be thankful for. I think I want that one. And this one, I think I want to pop it up just a little bit. So I'm going to use a little bit of foam tape. And I'm just going to put a piece. I think I'm just going to put a piece across <clears throat> the, the bottom. And another little piece across the top. And I think that's going to be plenty of foam tape on this.
And I'm just going to slide this in just like this because I want it to be seen. <clears throat> I want this to be like a focal point. So kind of up to the top. And now let's press it down. <clears throat> oh, it's coming together beautifully. Now, one place that you do not want to decorate is on these doors, these, these pull pieces, because they've got to be able to move uh, in order for your card to work and be beautiful. So I think what I want to do now is I'm going to pile these pumpkins up right about here. And I think I'm going to pop this one up on a piece of foam tape, and I'm just going to use foam tape. I'm just going to take one little piece and just stick it down right there. And I'm going to stick that pumpkin right about there. And then this one I'm going to actually sit it up where it's sitting up over top of that. So we're just going to put glue on the bottom. like so and see how we're getting some dimension by doing that and I'm going to take a tiny little piece of tape and I'm going to put that in this one Very, very nice. And I'm going to set that one right there. Now this little piece right here, I want it to go about like that. And I'm going to pop it up too, but I want to be very strategic in where I put my little dimensionals. So I know that I want it to sit up. So I am thinking that I want one piece right here. And then this little piece I'm going to cut in half. And it's going to go here. Let y'all see what I'm doing. What I'm doing is I'm framing this with this little sticky tape. And the reason for that is because I want this to sit right in here, but I don't want the tape to come up over top of that. If any of that makes sense to y'all. <laughs> I hope it does. So let's see, let's get the backers off of this. And I'm going to make sure I put this down where the tape is sticking to the card and not to this. Very good. Alrighty. Now, for a place to sign this card, you can cut a white panel back and put it right here. Um, what would be beautiful is if you have a die of a pumpkin um, or even stamp a pumpkin and cut it out and put it on the back and write your message on it. That would be very cute with this card. Um, let me know what you think. I think this is adorable. Look at, look at that. Look at the dimension. Isn't that pretty? And when they get the card, it can sit up. Oops, I got glue on it right there. Must have came off of my pumpkin. And this little leaf looks like it needs to be glued down. So I'm going to put just a tiny speck of glue right there and just stick that in it. So that doesn't break. I think I got glue off of this pumpkin right here. Okay. And this card is done.
and I think it turned out absolutely beautiful. I had so much fun making it. Now I will tell you that this is a very time consuming card and this is not one that you'd want to do in mass production. But if you have someone very special that you want to make a special card for, this would definitely be it. Look at the stage. Theater stage card. I love it. I think it's so beautiful. And if I had a die with some curtains, how cute would some curtains be on here where it looks like you're pulling back the curtains on the um, on the stage? So stinking cute. Well, I hope that you have enjoyed the process of me making this card. Not only that, but I hope that you'll try this at home. I'll have all of my measurements and all of the items that I use. Remember that the most of everything I used was in the e-card kit for October. And I don't know if Edith has any more of those left, but I will put the link in the description below. So you can pop over to um, Edith Ray's site, Scrapbooking With Me. And if you're interested in, in joining her club, her club kit, it's called E-Club Kit. And um, for joining her club kit, you also get 15% uh, off of her store. I believe she still offers that. And let's see. I think it is. Yeah, discount code for this. Oh, 20% off of all regular priced items in her store. And you have to put in, you, first you have to be a club kit member, which means that you have subscribed to receive her club kit per month. And then when you get ready to check out, if you put in club kit 19, you will get that 20% discount off of all of her um regularly priced items. So, and not only that, you will also get, as on the members page, Facebook members page, links to all of her digital printouts. This is one of her digital printouts for this month. She usually sends you a copy of it in your, in your kit. Let me zoom you out a little bit so you can see it. Isn't that gorgeous? And some of the pieces, now this is on regular copy paper. You could actually adhere this to a piece of cardstock. Or if you're a club kit member, you can just go in and print this on the uh, cardstock of your choice and then cut them out. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I love it. So, why don't you join with me? And let's make one of these cards. And even if you're not a club kit member, you can still make this card with some of your uh, some of your own stash. Uh, and you can make this for any occasion. Could you imagine this for a birthday card? Wow, um, a Christmas card. Oh my goodness. Open it up, and a beautiful Christmas tree sitting in there with a fireplace behind it. <gasps> ah. I can see that coming very soon in one of my upcoming videos, so y'all stay tuned. Um, perhaps a Christmas card over on my other channel, uh, Random Acts of Stamping. So um, y'all take a look at that channel and see what you think. I got some real pretty things going on over there. I used to do my stamping up on this channel, but I don't anymore. I made my own special channel for that, and I do a little bit of everything here. So again, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed um, the making of this card, and I hope that you would try making it yourself. And if you do, I would love to see it. So thank you so much for everything that you do. Thank you for being my faithful and loyal uh, followers. I love you all very much, and I wish you nothing but blessings upon blessings. And until we craft again, as I always say in closing, let everything that you do and say bring glory to our Father in Heaven. He is worthy. I love you guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.